Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, taking a deep dive into this Texas A&M defense heading into 2023. And you talk about potential to take a massive step from what you saw in 2022. It's this Texas A&M defense. We took a deep dive into the offense. A lot of the storylines around this Aggies team is on the offensive side of the ball, right? Young quarterback Bobby Petrino coming in. You take a look at the defense. And the potential for this unit to be elite in 2023 is certainly there. You saw some growing pains in 2022. But for Texas A&M fans, you got to be really excited about what this group could be in 2023. Now, before we get into it again, just want to say thank you to you guys. And especially the Texas A&M fans, we just took our deep dive into the offense. The amount of support, the amount of feedback was absolutely tremendous. Can't thank you guys enough for rocking with the boys. So one, if you do enjoy the content consider subscribing to the channel but more importantly let us know in the comment section who you guys think steps up how you think this defense looks in 2023 that's the best part about doing this is learning talking ball with you guys in the comment section so appreciate you guys rocking with the boys dill i'm gonna cue you up here overarching opinions on this aggies defense heading into 2023 I mean, obviously, if you listen to our offensive breakdown, like kind of very similar storylines apply. Why can't all this talent that they have, especially on that front, in that front four, why can't that talent start translating into really dominant football? Because, again, you saw flashes of that from Texas A&M last year, especially on the defensive side of the ball where they were really, really good. And then you saw too many games where they were – really, really not good. It's just too talented of a unit to, I think, have that sort of up and down roller coaster ride. And again, we've been saying this about Texas A&M for a long time. Like, when is it kind of going to, when is all this talent going to materialize? It's got to happen. I think. Oh, I'm I'm already drinking the Texas A&M Kool-Aid. Like, as a recruiting guy, like, all the talent that I see on both sides of the football, like, fire me up for the Aggies in 2023. I've already decided that. It's not even just recruiting. It's like you saw these moments of these guys playing really, really good football as freshmen and sophomores and and young, young players. It's like, now we just need to put a whole season of that that together. Now, here's what I'll say where you got to be excited is – having guys who can be first year dominant dudes, especially on the trenches, this is the same thing we talked about with this Texas A&M offense, right? Why do we think this group can get better on the offensive line? A lot of those guys were first, second, third year kind of guys on the defense. You had a lot of true freshmen playing. You had a lot of second year guys playing. It's rare to have guys be able to come in and, and just kind of routinely dominate. And so going into 2023 guys like Walter Nolan, Shamar Stewart, taking that second year jump, I think is certainly there. And I kind of want to start on the defensive line because this is a group that you you talk about one unit across the country that could take a massive step forward. This is Texas A&M defensive line. You take a look at what they were against the run last year, five yards per carry to opposing running backs. That's 107th nationally, 218 rushing yards per game, 124th nationally. And the most glaring statistic here, 5% sack rate. That is 102nd nationally. This group, Heading into 2023, I think, takes massive steps in all of those metrics. And that's the thing. Like, when you have a guy like Shamar Stewart having one and a half sacks, no Shamar Turner not having more than, like, two or so, they're too good of players. And, and it's not just, like, I'm not just recruit watching. Like, you saw the moments on the field. I mean, Shamar Stewart has a rare mix of power and athleticism. He's like, he's he's especially that power. I mean, you saw him pushing tackles around pretty routinely at times, but – Again, refining that pass rush ability. Walter Nolan, you saw be freaky good at times too. And then and then at times playing very unsound football. So it's again, this unit just feels primed to be ready to rock. Cause again, I think you do have three first rounders in Turner, Stewart, and Nolan. And then you have some really, really solid players like Regis and McKinley. And even LT Overton might emerge as a first rounder too. It's like you're just so stocked with talent. Like they need to be getting sacks. They need to make more negative plays, and and that feels like it's going to be the recipe for this team to really be dominant because the secondary can play. And digging into like the development a little bit more, like a guy like Walter Nolan or Shamar Stewart haven't played high school football less than twelve months ago when they were a true freshmen at Texas A and M. Like the 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 technique wasn't really like you didn't need that at the high school level. You turn on the film Walter Nolan, like he's just being being an alpha dog. So then when you get to the SEC level, like you have to start working some of that technique in there. I have a feeling that that's what they're, they kind of learned that lesson the hard way. 
in terms of, hey, we got to spend the next 12 months. Like, our body, like, we have the power in our hands. Like you said, you saw Shamar Stewart, like, overpower some SEC tackles at times. Like, he has it. Now it's like, all right, let's put together some pass rush combinations. Let's put some – let's add some tools to the tool backs, as I like to say. And if they do that, like, this group is going to take a massive step forward. I'm going to kick it to you before we move to the linebackers and secondary. I'm giving you one name that's going to really step up in 2023 for the Aggies up front. Where are you going? Yeah, I mean, and this is going to be super chalky, but it, it, it's it got to be Walter Nolan. Oh, you're I mean, going with the top three national recruit? Gotcha. You saw the moments of him that were like, well, this guy is, I mean, he's a game, a true, true game changer. I mean, the ability to penetrate at that size is just, again, that's what, you're like, free. when Aaron Donald disrupts whole football games, that's why. He can get in the backfield constantly. He's too big, too strong to move around up front. He's just he, – he's pretty much got that perfect package. It's just not, again, playing your gap every play and not making those type of mistakes that were costing them and giving – allowing offense to put up way too many yards on him. I mean, he's that type of guy. I think he can have a dominant, dominant season. Why? Who do you think? Who, who do you think? I, I, I'm, I'm going to shout out the veteran, McKinley Jackson. I love McKinley Jackson, have loved McKinley Jackson. I know it's not the chalky pick, but he's a guy that I like. I do want to – kind of get into one thing that kind of just came into my mind right now is the importance of having guys on the inside to provide pass rush because you're seeing a lot of teams go to that RPO and it's like trying to neutralize basically the best edge defender, right? We're going to kind of put you in a bind. So having a guy like Walter Nolan or McKinley Jackson that can penetrate from the inside, bust up pockets, get into the backfield quick, that's becoming more and more important. And a guy like Jalen Carter last year, like you saw – what he can do to a defense in terms of having a game record in the middle of that defensive line. I think that's becoming a more important thing. And you're starting to see teams value having the penetrators, having the pass rushes. It's no longer like 325 pound plus dudes that are just two gapping. Like we want guys who are disruptive on the inside to kind of counter this RPO. Walter Noah McKinley Jackson think they can do that. And now that's the thing, you know, I don't want to like leave out everyone else. Cause it's like, yeah, they have the star power of Magic. guys like Stewart. In, in Walter Nolan, but you then look, I mean, Regis, Rakes, McKinley Jackson, they're just super, super solid players too. So it's not to say like they're just a star-studded group with some weaknesses. I mean, these guys can all play. Like, are those three going to go be first-round picks? Probably not, but they're probably going to be on NFL rosters at some time, at one time or another. I mean, they're, they're really, really solid players. So it's like this unit as a whole, it, it just, you combine that star power with, some depth I just this unit needs to they need to be game records and they just weren't last year. And it, because they were true freshmen, I think they are oh. in 2024 or in 2023, excuse me. Now we talk about the defense line for eight minutes. I want to talk about this linebacker group. And this is the one position group where I look on the film last year. I look at the numbers. I'm saying this is probably not the best unit of this defense. Now I will say what's the best friend of a linebacker? Having a defensive line that keeps you clean, that can wreck you, that, that can allow you to play in space. So, guy like Chris Russell Jr., Adrian Cooper, both really solid linebackers that played a lot of football. If this defensive line takes a step, I think this linebacker group can take a step. And again, I don't think you're looking at a top for a first round linebacker in this group. That being said, I, this group is more than serviceable to take that step as well in 20. Again, I, I think there were moments that that defensive line did that did them a disservice. I mean, there yeah, were just big creases at weird times. And it's like, as a linebacker, that's a tough play to make when there's like a five yard gap because your de defensive linemen aren't playing sound football. So it's like those guys, again, do I think they're the heart of this team or the strength of this team? Certainly not. I, I do think that comes from the defensive line and secondary, but they're a good enough unit where they're not, they're not a liability, that's for sure. And, and with a good defensive line play, they should be fine. All right, let's take a look at the strong part of this defense last year. And, and a group that I know you lose some guys, Antonio Johnson being like my due to the NFL draft. Like this is still going to be a really good secondary that was elite last year. I mean, you take a look, 56% completion percentage to opposing quarterbacks, only six yards per catch, really good at not giving up the big play. Dill, I'll, I'll kind of tee you up here. Where you want to start in this secondary, I have a feeling at where you're going. I'm not going to lie. Like, I think Damani Richardson coming back to this Here football team is just like up. massive news. I mean, you talk about a guy who feels like the heart and soul of a unit. Like that Arkansas game when he took that football away from the other guy and ran it back for a touchdown. I mean, 
that's the type of play. A couple plays against Miami that stand out, big hits, big plays. Like just the guy who felt like the tone setter. And he wasn't the best player on the unit. I mean, that probably goes to Jalen Jones, Antonio Johnson. Those guys were stars. But Damani Richardson, way he did feel like the heartbeat. And having him back and then adding some other guys, especially at that cornerback position, I love where this, this – Yeah, I had a feeling you'd go Damani Richardson first, and I love it. I would agree. Like, without having access to the locker room, but just seeing the demeanor of this Texas A&M defense, like, when, the, when, when it was a big moment, like, people were turning to Damani Richardson on the defense side of the ball. Now, I want to cook for Tony Grimes a minute. I, I mean, I think you you ask me – who might have benefited from just getting a change of scenery more across the country? Tony Grimes, if you were to ask me what guy in the transfer portal could have the largest impact at his new destination, like give me Tony Grimes. Tony Grimes, 12 months ago, we were talking about a potential first-round pick. You were seeing him in all sorts of preseason mock drafts. And then this UNC defense just goes to hell, quite frankly. Like absolute dumpster fire, couldn't stop a nosebleed. It's hard to play good football when your defense sucks. Tony Grimes coming to Texas A&M, I think he's still a first-round talent. Again, this is a guy that early skipped a year of senior in high school, so essentially kind of going into his junior year from a development standpoint. They'll fire me up for Tony Grimes as being that alpha as a cornerback for the Aggies. And especially losing a guy like Jalen Jones, who, I mean, that's a big-time number one corner. You love I don't, him. Yeah. It's huge to be able to replace that, him with a guy in Tony Grimes who, again, has that kind of top-end level of talent. And I do like Tyreek Chappelle. It's not anything to put him down. Josh DeBerry coming in, very, very good player from Boston College. But I do think Tony Grimes coming in and, and being that number one guy, I think is huge because you, you do, I don't know, it always feels like you do need that in a defense. You need that one guy who's going to lock down top, top number one. I'm interested to see where they use Josh DeBerry. Like, I, I love that he's like kind of a nickel guy. I want to see him in the box, let him blitz off the edge. Loved him out of BC. Like, I, I really do think he's going to play a lot for Texas AM too. And, I mean, to shout out one more guy before we wrap up, Sam McCall, yeah. if you remember him coming out of high school, top 50 nationally ranked dude, Florida State, as much as I, I love what Florida State's doing with Mike Norvell, like they didn't have a damn clue what to do with Sam McCall. I think they just got this super traitsy, super athletic guy. They were like, oh, we don't know what to do with you. We'll just throw you out on special teams. Like now he's like kind of entrenched at this cornerback spot. It might take a year, but he's kind of behind guys who kind of have been playing it for a while. And maybe towards the back half of the season – like Sam McCall could be another name that you talk about traits. You talk about like the potential to be a very good collegiate football player. Like just fire me up for Sam McCall. All the flashes of him in the spring game where you're like, yes. man, yes, kind of have something. Cause like, I mean, he's getting his hands on the ball. He obviously can run with anyone again. Like you're looking a very deep unit. You are losing the two high level pros, but you're coming back very strong. Even, even Gilbert or Jarden Gilbert, Played a lot of football last year, very experienced. So I think you're looking, again, at a unit that I don't want to say shouldn't miss a beat. Like, will they be as good? Who knows? But they're they're going to be a very formidable unit, I think, again. And, and again, it, it, to me, just wrapping this up, it comes down to that defensive line. They need to go dominate. They, they didn't dominate last year. They have the talent to do it. If they do that, like, I, this defense is going to be a handful for anyone. God damn it. What, August 22nd, 1025 at yeah, night. Here I am in. back at Texas A&M sucking me back in heading into 2023. This is it's one of the most talented teams in the country. It's one of the more fun teams in the country. The boys can't wait to see what the product is on the field again. Aggie fans, appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. If you do enjoy the content again, so want to support us, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate y'all for rocking with us, and we'll talk to y'all later.